Check one, two. Go! Curious about real estate? Yes! Then you've come to the right place. Get the knowledge you need. Get over the fear and get started. This is the Michael Quarles Real Estate Show with your host, Michael Quarles. Hello, everybody. Michael Quarles with the Michael Quarles Real Estate Show, and welcome to Podcast 286. Today, we have the five questions sent in. And remember, if you have a question, send it to support at michaelquarles.com. One more time, support at michaelquarles.com. Here we go. Question number one. At what point in the transaction do you let the seller know that you intend to wholetail the property? Well, I'm pretty forward with the seller all the way through. I mean, our agreement says we can assign it. So it says right there in clear, it's one of the paragraphs. This agreement may be assigned. It says in one of the paragraphs that the, the buyer intends to begin reselling the property immediately and make a huge profit. And huge profits bold in the largest two words on the page. Any money that we make on the, con- on the concurrent close or simultaneous close or, or what have you is solely owned by the buyer. It says right there in my agreement that I'm going to put it on the multiple listing service, find a buyer, and sell it. I'm not disguising what I'm doing. I'm ultra honest. In fact, I'll get price reductions or price decreases over what another investor offered somebody because I'm telling the truth. I think it's highly important that if we want to negotiate, we negotiate from a position of honesty, not dishonesty. And anytime you think that you shouldn't tell somebody something, that's when you should tell them. So even though it may be hard, even though you feel have some fear going, if I tell them the truth, they may not sign my agreement. Shame on us if we do that. Tell them the truth. Let them, based upon truth, agree to sell you the house. And it's okay. It's okay if one or two of them or three of them walk away because they want you to lie to them. In fact, I had a seller one time indicate to me that they would sell me their house on a short sale, but they wanted $5,000 cash outside of escrow if he agreed to do the short sale and sell me his house. And I said, well, I can't do that. That's highly illegal. That's called lender fraud. And the seller says, well, another investor indicated they could. And I said, well, here's the situation. If you're willing to break the law or agree to break the law with someone else, to what extent Will they honor their commitment to you? Or will you honor your commitment to them? I just choose not to do business with people that aren't legally bound, ethically bound, and morally bound. However, if that's something you feel that you need to do and go do business with people that are actually breaking the law, committing fraud, then be that. And it's, you know, you just take the stand that, you know, you'd have to do this stuff the right way. Great question, though. I noticed on BP, Bigger Pockets, you mentioned that you don't think absentee owners are prospects for cold calling. Is there a particular reason why? They seem to be strong candidates to hit and with cold calling and follow up with few pieces of direct mail. I, you must have read that wrong. Now, in the old days, man, I, did, I cold called for a year for two hours a day. And I know some of you have heard me say the script, but here it goes again. Hi, my name is Michael Quarles with I Buy Houses. I'm looking for three and four bedroom homes in your neighborhood. And I was wondering, who do you know that's planning on moving? No one. Terrific. You can go to the rest of the script that we teach in our coaching program, or you can just hang up and go again to somebody else. You kind of can tell if you ask someone, who do they know that's planning on moving? And they, they're thinking about selling. They're going to say, well, you know, we are. It's strange how you knew how you called us because we're wanting to sell our house. But if the neighbor across the street's looking to sell, they're going to walk over there and get you the phone number, call you back as long as you ask them for it. But I'm, I, yeah, I believe in absolutely calling absentees because in the old days, we used to call that group. The active for rent absentee owners, so they have a for rent sign out, they have an ad in the newspaper, they're on Craigslist, they're on Zillow, somewhere they're wanting to rent a piece of property, they're a great prospect for calling, doing one of three things. Keep in mind that the absentee owner could be a seller which is what I'm looking for. They could be a buyer of my properties in the future and I could start creating relationships with them and they could be either a money partner, JV partner, 
or a lender on future projects after I create that relationship. So those absentee owners are very, very valuable. And I know if someone has something for rent, it's about one in 20 that you can make an appointment on. It's pretty simple. Now, if you did lease options and that kind of thing, then they're a perfect candidate for a sandwich lease situation. So no, absolutely, I would market to absentee owners. I also like owner-occupieds. I like FISBOs, I like expireds, I like unlawful detainers. Those are harder to get the list for and everything, but go down to the courthouse, and if you can get the, the information, get the information. I like just general prospecting from a cold call perspective. Call people that have a, a car for sale, someone that's doing a yard sale, those kinds of things. Great candidates, great candidates. Thanks for listening. We'll be right back. Are you running out of leads? It's time you tried Yellow Letters at yellowletters.com. Get motivated seller leads through yellow letters, postcards, zip letters, typed professional letters, greeting cards, door hangers, and business cards. Yellow Letters is a full service marketing company created with your success in mind. Get the personal attention you need to get your direct mail campaign started and get in touch at yellowletters.com. And we are back in three, three, two, two, one. one. Question number three. What's the best way to find an REO agent? It's pretty simple. Most multiple listing services, which are which is a service that realtors use or brokers or agents use to place the property, to advertise the property to the public. Most of those have public a public site okay so not i'm not talking about like realtor.com or zillow or, or trulia or something like that i'm talking about your local city mls they have a public site and one of the search criteria that they'll have for you is for you to be able to go i want to look for reo properties so you're going to do that search and put reo properties and you're going to get the list of reo agents any agent that has multiple properties is a person i want to chat with because they're telling me they have experience and they know what I need to have them do. Now, if they if my local area doesn't have that service, then I'm gonna call a, my closing company, I'm gonna call my escrow manager or escrow sales rep, and I'm gonna ask them for the short list of REO agents in the area. They're gonna know who they are. But great question. Question number four. I'm using the Alex VA system, Can, thank you, and I am investing locally. When calling back, should I go through the entire Ryan script before going out to see the house? Well, it depends. If you you know if you're going to close over the phone, of course that's what the Ryan script was developed for. And if you're going to go knock on the door, I would go through the seller script one and two, which is not the Ryan script. People that are listening are probably going, "What's all this about?" Well, the, they're talking the Alex and the Ryan system. Let me back up. The Alex and the Ryan system is a system that I use because I buy virtually. And we have started to allow our coaching students to use our Alex portion of our Alex Ryan virtual system, which means we answer the phone, we go through the script with the potential seller, the whole bit. And then the student calls them back as a Ryan if they're doing stuff virtually or as the investor if they're going to go knock on the door. So if you're going to knock on the door, seller script number two, which is the one that asks the, the questions, and you guys will see it in the resource center. Great question. Thanks for asking. And thank you for being a coaching student, and thank you for using the Alex system. That Alex system at $97 a month is an absolute steal for anybody that's in the coaching program and utilizing that. It is, it's perfect. We answer the phone, you know, Monday through Friday, work hours. We call the people back. Who called on a weekend we call the people back who we've spoken to who we didn't make an appointment for at 15 30 60 and 90 days later if we grab an email address from the person when we retrieve their information we send them a series of 29 emails on behalf of the investor i mean our follow-up and follow-through system is outstanding in the alex va system so great question thank you for asking question number five how can i find an agent who will list houses on the mls with just having a contract sign Boy, that's just a lot of work. You know, as a broker, I know you can. I know you can do this. But a lot of brokers don't allow their agents to do it. And a lot of agents don't know that you can actually do it. I mean, it's not something that's taught a lot in the brokerage business. The easiest way to find someone that's willing to participate and do what you need them to do is find your mom and pop realtor or broker or agent. So find that one that works for the little shop or owns the little shop who thinks outside the box because this is this requires a lot of outside the box thinking 
Is it difficult? Absolutely it is. Is it worth finding the person? It absolutely is because here's what you get to do. The moment you have someone sign my agreement, my agreement says, and it authorizes you, although you don't need the authorization, but we put it in writing that tomorrow kind of thing, you can put a for sale sign up on the property, you can advertise it in newspapers or other periodicals, and you can put it in the multiple listing service. It's telling everybody, going back to being honest, it's telling everybody what our intention is. It's, it's wonderful, it's beautiful, but it does take some, some searching to find the right agent. But you know, that's life itself. I mean, not everybody's going to be, you know, and do the things that you want them to do. So it's, it's about managing your relationships. And the nice thing about talking to multiple real estate agents and brokers is, is you're going to find the ones that do work and the ones that don't do anything. And there is a difference. And so you're going to have all these eyes out there looking for houses for you, opportunities for you, and you're going to find the person, the guy or the gal who's going to list it on the MLS. Great question. Appreciate the opportunity to say hello to you guys. And remember, if you're looking to get into real estate investing, check out our coaching program. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Michael Quarles Real Estate Show. Get more info and stay in touch at michaelquarles.com.